All right, today we're going to be going over murder boxes and how to use them in the ocean. There are many uses for them, including turret towers, bases, and blockers. And we'll go into all kinds of ways to use them and how you can kill enemy tames with them. So what am I referring to? We're referring to vacuum chambers. That's right. And we're going to dive into them today. But before we dive into them, Winter Wonderland has been going on for about a week now. So let me know in the comments below what you think about the Winter Wonderland event. Are you enjoying it? If this video comes out after the event's over, did you like the event? Are you looking forward to it happening again next year? Just let us know in the comments below. Alright, so today is all about vacuum chambers and some interesting ways you can use them. These vacuum chambers are essential for underwater base defense. But in order to use them properly, you need to understand how they work. So we'll go over the settings first. Alright, so vacuum chambers can be placed anywhere, and if you've seen my foundation video, you'll know these count as a foundation, and they expand much further than the foundation range does. If you run into an issue where plants and stuff like that, these uh, new things in the bottom of the ocean you can't get rid of, won't let you place these. You can simply put them on pillars. Uh, you can raise pillars up out of the ground, right? And then you can start your vacuum chambers wherever you want them. And then you can just remove the pillars. And then, of course, if you if you have not seen my previous videos, you'll know that... Uh, I've been testing some builds and I don't like pillars anymore. And you saw that, right? The pillar was connected to the ground and connected to that. But because it was connected to the ground first, I demoed it from the ground, they all fell. Even though only the bottom one should have demoed. The rest of them should have stayed floating uh, attached to the vacuum chamber. So anyway, this is about vacuum chambers, not pillars, so let's get back into the vacuum chamber. Alright, so you can place them pretty much anywhere and they float, right? Uh, you can place them in the air, because uh, we're, we're in the water, but it works kind of like air. Anyway, you can place them up and they stay in the air. Now when you come up, you don't have a whole lot of options. You can't get in them, uh, and when you can, and there's no really a lot of options when you look at them. So the first thing you got to do is when you come into this menu here, which with the controller is Y uh, or top face button, depending on your controller, and then uh, or E on the keyboard. So you can lock them, or you can unlock them, or unlock all connected. All right, once the vacuum chamber is unlocked. Then you have the option, you can just press E or Y or top face button to kind of cycle through the different walls you can use. All right, so this is a window, this is no wall, and this is a wall. Now you used to be able to do this kind of stuff with the uh, vacuum chamber on Arca ASE, but you had to power it. You no longer have to power them, which makes them even more useful. Okay, and then of course the open wall will look different depending on your graphics. Alright, so now we've opened the vacuum chamber all the way up, and as you can see, it has borders, which makes it stand out. So if you come up to it, and we look at our options, alright, we can pin code it, we can demolish it, we can pick it up. We have this, hide all connected frames, or hide frame. So if we had multiple vacuum chambers connected, and we did hide all frames, it would do this right here, right? It would remove all the frames from all of them, making it harder to, uh, maybe make it harder to notice, except... <laughs> Depending on the graphic settings, it might stand out like it does on mine. But anyway, uh, then we can flood them, or uh, if they're flooded, we can unflood them. Now, let's go ahead and put these back on for now. All right, so let's flood the chamber. All right, so we flooded it. Right, as you can see, now we can swim in here. There's water instead of air. Right, everything can pass through these bars. They don't really count as bars. I, mean, I guess you can hit them, but you can pass through them. But right now, if we were to hide connected frames. The vacuum chamber is basically gone. Uh, so you want to be careful about that. Uh, you want frames if you're going to have them hidden. You're going to be removing the water from it if you want to know where your chambers are at. So now we have to refine it. I don't even know where it is. It took a little bit of time to refine it, okay? So be careful about that. Alright, so those are settings. So how can we use them? What can really happen if you can pass through these, right? Okay, so we have a couple of different setups going on here. If you watched my Brute Cave video on the, how to build, you'll know you'll have noticed that I had a floating turret tower outside. I did it with vacuum chambers, so I went ahead and we've got the showing the uh, edges here, so you can kind of see. So as you can see, we did vacuum chambers three wide, two down, and two across, and we built inside of them. Now I'll show you how to do this build in a minute. I will go ahead and hide this, so you can see it a little better. All right, so now you can't even see the vacuum chambers. All you can see is the structures that the turrets are setting on. So, since we can see the frames, we can now see where the ceilings will snap to. Alright, I mean, we can technically just start with the door frames. But you'll see there's an, they won't really 
Door frames only snap one direction off of each of these, so if we use the ceilings, we can get the uh, more directions going on. So we'll just snap a ceiling for now. And if we put a door frame like this, and we put some door frames like this, and then we remove the ceilings, All right, and we'll remove it with, by destroying it. This one goes away, right? Because it no longer has support, because technically the door frame wouldn't go this way, right there. I've some had I've had some weird hit and miss things with door frames. Sometimes they support each other, sometimes they don't. All right. So as you can see, vacuum chambers are limited on how you can use door frames without uh, having some kind of support system. Besides the vacuum chamber, you can't go a different direction than the edges of the vacuum chamber. So keep that in mind when building in here. If you want the vacuum chamber to be what's supporting your uh, door frames that you're going to put your turrets on, you want to make sure you're just building off of the uh, vacuum chamber. All right, so now we're going to hide the frames. Uh, seeing the frames makes it easier to build on, so we'll hide the frames. So there, there you go. As you can see, it looks like they're floating now. And we'll get rid of the water. All right, so there you go. We flood it all connected, and it's all, uh, looks, it's all gone now. <laughs> you can't see it anymore. Of course, they're still there. Uh, so now you can build turrets on these, uh, you can build whatever, you can put a generator on it, do whatever you want here. But it's a vacuum chamber, right? It's a type of structure, so will these turrets fire through it? Alright, well, let's go. Let's do a test real quick. Okay, we've got these vacuum chambers set up, and we have a turret set up here, under and behind them. So we're going to put a dinosaur up above and in front of these, and see if this turret will shoot it. Okay, so you can see the turrets at an angle through that, and here we have a dinosaur. We're going to go ahead and unclaim this. And as you can see, turrets fire right through, no problem. This basically doesn't exist, just an air pocket. Alright, let's claim this guy. So yeah, these basically don't exist, they're just an air pocket. And they just, they're just they an air pocket that provides some support for structures. And of course, if we fill this with water, they would no longer be an air pocket, and it would be full of water, and the turrets would still shoot through it, even though you wouldn't be able to necessarily see them without these frames, if we were to hide these frames. Okay, so we'll hide those frames so it looks a little nicer. Now, if you're using these around your defenses, be careful. Let me show you why. All right. So there's several dangers to using air pockets around your around your dinos and around your base. Uh, one of the dangers is if you have water tames and you accidentally swim into them, uh, this is what happens. Yeah. <laughs> All right, they die. Okay, so your water tames get killed by your air pockets. So be careful about that. Be aware of that. Now, this is a little weird because I, my Bassy died in an air pocket. I'm on foot and breathing underwater. Um, I don't know if that w works on officials, but that's definitely a glitch that needs to be patched. Um, because that can be taken advantage of uh, allowing people to rocket run underwater. All right, so why you can use air pockets around your base to defend with, so you can use Gigas and other land dinos to fight with. You can also keep in mind your enemy can swim their land dinos in there and get their land dinos air as well. So make sure to use these strategically. Now for the thing that makes vacuum chambers amazing. All right. Now remember, if we flood these and we hide the connected frames, you can't see them anymore. Right. So what you can do is uh, you can build an area, right, and then build vacuum chambers off of that area all the way back to somewhere else and leave one wall so that you can still find them and use them. All right. So we'll reshow so you can see. Created a little line here. This can go back as far as you want, all the way to your wall if you have that out far out into your cave somewhere. All right. Okay, and then we'll show you how this works. So we'll go ahead and hide the connected. This is what makes them super powerful. All okay, right, it's one, kind of a one-time use. Once you do this to your enemy, they're going to know they're there, and they're going to start destroying your vacuum chambers uh, so this doesn't happen again. All right, so, <laughs> so if you build an air pocket somewhere, fill it full of water, and leave it hidden so when enemies swim in with a... Bunch of water tames. Don't do one or two water tames, right? If they only got a couple of water tames, go out and kill them. Don't let them know about you have this defense built up. All right, but once they have enough water tames in there that it's worth it, because, again, this is probably only going to work one time if they realize what happened. Drain all of the connected containers and kill their water tames. <laughs> right? As soon as that chamber, so you can fill an entire, so you can use this as a defense, right? You can fill a cave full of these. And then, uh, I don't do that. And then immediately, as soon as the tames die, you can immediately flood them again. And by immediately flooding them again, if the enemy didn't see it in time and realize what caused the water tames to die, they may just think they got meshed or some kind of weird glitch. 
Or that you did something, right? And they may not, may just come back in with more water tames. But if they know what you did and they know how you did it, they're going to come in and just start destroying your vacuum chambers. So why killing a tribe's water tames in this manner would be pretty funny. And but it, since it only works one time, it's kind of an expensive way to do it. Uh, but it might just save you, right? If you have 40 or 50 people raiding you and you're a six-man tribe or something, and you kill all their water tames at once, they may be out of water tames. Uh, even big tribes don't oftentimes like to raise a lot of water tames. All right, so as you can see, we have vacuum chambers blocking the entrance to a cave. It takes more explosives and elements to rip through vacuum chambers, so this is another great way to use them. You just build them as a blocker throughout your cave. And then if you need to pass through them to get out of your cave or whatever, you can just unlock them, right? Unlock what you want. And then open some doors and work your way through. And then swim, fill them with water, swim through however you need to do. And then when you're done, just come back and re-block them. Right, now you know all you need to know about vacuum chambers. And hopefully you can find all kinds of new ways to use them that maybe aren't in this video or no one else has even thought of yet. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button. Have an awesome day.